Live look at Valiente Field number three here, our first match of the tournament. Good morning and welcome to World Polo League coverage. My name is Gus Whitelaw. I'm joined by a professional polo player from the Colora formerly from the Colorado squad, Diego Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh joining me here today uh, to uh, help guide us through the, uh, the match here and share his insight with us. So Colorado facing off against Blackwatch here, match number one. Diego, first of all, what happened? Diego, uh, uh, Adolfo stole your team. Yeah, a, a, a new guy called Adolfo <laughs> re replaced me. So let, let's see how they do. We'll see. We'll see how he does. Okay. Yeah, an up and coming guy. Yeah. Okay. So into play here, chucker number one off and working. We've got a couple substitutions for the Black Watch squad. Normally, you see Pete Merlos and Tommy Biddle out there today taking their places. Juan Bellini Senior there and Lucas Lalor. You saw Bellini there in the helmet trying to chase down Zubia, but Juanzu with nice control here through the midfield colorado and yellow black watch in the black jerseys the black watch lineup out there is lalor bolini figueras and juan cruz merlos here lalor going to work there trying to work it on the near side now playing the number three position for the black watch squad the ball's left behind and the newest addition to the colorado squad gets some touches on the ball here that's adolfo cambiaso he stole this colorado team from my man here with me today diego cavanaugh and they're often working here in chucker number one. All the action along the sideboards there. Hero Del Cadillo, one of the talented youngsters on that Colorado squad. Trying to keep that ball away from Lalour. Lucas Lalour filling in for Pite Merlos. Lalour with a five goal handicap. Merlos on eight, so they get three more goals on. The scoreboard there, more on that when we have a break in the action here. At the back of the pack, it's Black Watch with Bellini now trying to make some progress and get out of the Black Watch half of the field, which is, shoot, where we've been since this match started about a minute and a half ago. On the near side, turned back by Lalor. Near side again, turned back by Colorado. That was Zubia. Adolfo trying to get a quick break on that one there. The ball left behind, though. Hit forward by Blackwatch into Colorado territory. And Nacho Figueres on the play. Figueres. Nacho on Jatai Lohan trying to get some work done down there inside the 60 now. Juan Cruz Merlos on the gray pony there. Lalor trying to battle past Adolfo Cambiasso. The deep neck shot. Oh, he gets it. What a shot there. How about that? A high flag there for Blackwatch. What do you think about that one, Diego? Yeah, it was a great goal by by Lucas Lalor, hitting a, a next shot. Uh, I think uh, Blackwatch uh, started the game with a lot of control of the ball. Uh, Colorado needs to get the the ball and, and start to put the rhythm in the game. So again, the uh, the Blackwatch team in order is Juan Cruz Merlos at one, Nacho Figueras at two. Lucas Lalor at three, and Juan Bellini Sr. in the number four position out there today for Blackwatch. So a little bit of a change up in the lineup there. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure on uh, what the cause of the change was. It may be an injury there. I'm, I'm not positive. We're still waiting on uh, some of that information. In the meantime, it's Adolfo Cambiasso looking to even the score here on a run to goal. Juan Cruz Merlos trying to shut him down. Tough to do. <laughs> was a great great run by uh, by Adolfo that mare is really fast very explosive and uh, it was just a matter of of hitting the ball because the mare was was gone yep she had she was doing her job and she was looking for him to do his uh Juan Cruz shows up to do his job to try and defend against him but man Adolfo Cambiaso had that one sewn up on Gete Creciente, am I saying that right? Yeah, Gete Creciente. Gete Creciente, I'm learning, I'm learning here. The third tournament, fourth tournament, I'm starting to get it. Yeah, she's a great mare. I, I was lucky to play her last year, so I, I know her. She's a great mare. Beautiful, beautiful black uh, animal there. Out of the throw in Colorado with the first touches. And I think our first whistle of the match here coming with 347 left in Chucker 1. So this is really our first break in the action. The score 7 to 1 here. Uh, we started six to nothing due to handicap. It's a 20 black watch. I think uh, normally a, uh, well, I don't know what they are, but today they get six goals on handicap, five uh, different than Colorado. I think they're a 21 goal team today, so they get five goals plus one, Less gives them six yeah. goals. So they started six to nothing yeah. in this match. Black watch then scored to go seven yeah. to nothing. Adolfo comes back and puts one in. Yeah. 
you to are, go seven to one. You are good uh, for math. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a while. I figured today was going to be my day. Let's do it on the air. Why not? Here's uh, Hero Del Caril for the Colorado squad. We haven't gone through their lineup yet. It's Rob Dronavis, Juan Zubia, Hero Del Caril, and Adolfo Cambiasso. Here's Del Caril. On the 40-yarder there, Nacho out to try and defend that one. Juan Cruz keeps it in play. Juan Cruz Merlos, Black Watch coming off the back line with a live ball here. One not sent between the post there on the penalty attempt by Colorado. Juan Cruz held it in. Now Black Watch looking to get downfield here on a pass from Bellini Sr. to Nacho Figueres. Figueres on Jatai Lohan. Ball downfield for the uh, Pite replacement there in La Lure. Interesting choice there uh, with La Lure. Uh, a great player, but three goals less on handicap than Pite. Uh, so that should prove to provide an interesting dynamic here. It already is with a 6 to nothing, uh, you know, scoreboard right now. That uh, The difference there has put them up by a bunch. Wow, look at that. Rob Novice. I mean, just amazing touches. The confidence he had there. We watched the replay. Yeah, that was a great goal from, from Rob. He has a lot of confidence on, on, on Jordi, and this last tap is amazing. I mean, beautiful touches yeah. there. That no. stallion never lets him down. That horse has not yeah, missed yeah. a first chucker since February 6th. I mean, he, to, whenever the first match was in, in February. He plays very well on him. He has a lot of confidence, and that last tap, you know, he didn't have much angle, so it was a great goal. So when we talk about confidence and the, the things that, you know, what that translates to, that's where you see, that's what the confidence, is that where the confidence translates to? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there are a couple of courses that you've been playing for many years and year by year you get more confidence on, on, on the horse and you know him better and the horse knows you. So uh, Rob makes a great combination with Jordi. Uh, a great play there. Uh, you got to have... You know, pretty good nerves there. That ball working towards the back line. Your team down by a bunch. Still early here in the match. Uh, but uh, anyway, nice moves there by Rob and Jordy. Here comes Zubia trying to beat feet out of Colorado territory there. Look at him racing downfield. Zubia now. Juan Cruz getting back there. Juan Cruz Merlos able to put the moves there on Zubia. Gets the back shot coming forward and coming down the line there. Juan Bellini Sr., he takes it forward now with a back shot. Three Colorado players all over. Del Cadillo instructed to take the ball, at least for now. He gets around an inbound. Lalour fires downfield. Zubia out in front. That one's already knocked down, though. Del Cadillo at the boards. Del Cadillo pressured by Juan Cruz Merlos. Merlos on the gray there. He gets the steal and gets away. Juan Cruz Merlos holding his own so far now. Zubia now. Lalour. Kicked by a pony, picked up by Zubia. Zubia, tracking to goal. Zubia, Zubia, tapping, tapping. Can he finish here? Adolfo in to help him out and puts that ball right on through. Nice team play. Nice team play. Yeah, Zubia having a lot of control of the ball, bringing it to, to goal. He takes two men and leaves Adolfo all alone behind. Look at that. The pink helmet's kind of surrounding him there. Yeah. <laughs> And right on through. Easy play for Adolfo to pick the pieces up there. And uh, another point onto the scoreboard there. They're trying to rack up as many as they can here in checker number one. Uh, They're out of time to do too much more, though. Just about at the 30-second horn here. The ball will make it back into play. The 30-second warning horn goes. In the final moments of checker number one here, Juan Cruz Merlos with a back shot down the sideboards. Picked up here by Lalor. Lucas Lalor filling in for Pite Merlos for Black Watch. Lalor. Lalor. Ten seconds left to play here. Chucker number one. Lucas Lalor has run into an Adolfo roadblock there, and Geronimo Del Cadillo has taken that ball away. Beautiful play there. That ball crosses the midfield line as the double horn goes, and Chucker number one is all said and done. Nice action here in the first. It's seven to three. Four goals from the field here. Uh, six on handicap, puts 10 on the board, and gets us out of checker number one. So you're tuned in to Checker TV and the Polo Channel's live coverage of the World Polo League and the Triple Crown of Polo. Match number one here. We're going to go away to a quick commercial and be right back for the start of checker number two. 
this club. It is one of the most welcoming, friendly, but yet competitive polo clubs. We're all here for the love of the sport and the love of the lifestyle. This is the most fun you can have on a horse. We have several different levels. We play minus two to 20 goals. So if you don't have your own horse, we have club horses that you can use. The fields here are incredible. We've got three great grass facilities. And in the fall and the spring, we can play arena. We do a bunch of events during the summer. And our idea behind that is to promote polo, is to again, bring polo to the masses. And this past year, we hosted the Rocky Mountain Polo Festival. Every single person that I've seen at practice in tournament is just having a great time. It's a great group of people. Everybody and anybody is welcome at the Denver Polo Club. We're back live to the action here in South Florida in Wellington. We had a little bit of rain move through before this match started. We started a couple minutes behind schedule, but that has all cleared out and given way for just a, a perfect setting here uh, on Valiente Field number three in front of the main barns here at Valiente. Again, my name is Gus Whitelaw. I'm joined with Diego Cavanaugh. Uh, we're coming into chucker number two here. The score is seven to three. Colorado down by four goals behind Black Watch. Uh, interesting, this Colorado Black Watch is kind of a, is a matchup that we've seen before uh, in the, I uh, was at a final of the subsidiary, I believe. Is that right, Diego? Help me with that. You guys played Black Watch. We played wa Black Watch twice. Twice. We played them, um, see, in the last two tournaments. Uh-huh. One time each. And it was one and one. And did they, they beat Colorado the last time that... You guys played. Yes. Is that right? So, yes. But that was a different team, kind of a different lineup for both squads. For both squads, yeah. Those Lalure and Bellini filling in here today for yeah. Biddle for and Pete Merlos. Yeah. Yeah. And then tell me, so you've left the Colorado squad, and where are you now? I'm uh, with World Polo League, uh -huh. which is uh, with Guille Terrera, uh -huh. Agustin Nero, and Poroto Cambiaso. Oh, wow. That's a strong team. Watch out. Here's Zubia working downfield. Bellini trying to defend against him there. And the whistle sounds here. 16 seconds into chucker number two. We yeah. watch the replay here. See if we yeah, can see the, what the umpires yeah, did like. Not, not enough room for, for Juan to try to play the ball. And it looked, looked like a foul. Look, looked a lot like a foul. Yeah. Uh, the umpires were all over that one. Um, they saw the same thing. This is uh, the first match in 26-goal action for Bellini and Lalor mm -hmm. this year. Yes. Uh, so we'll see if it takes these guys any time to ad ad adapt to the rules. The speed I don't think will be a big deal because these guys practice with them there and all the practices. It's no different, not a big difference in what they're used to on any given day. Uh, but the officiating probably a little bit different than... Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can be playing practices, but, you know, to play with the whites and it's a different rhythm and you need right. to get... So it wouldn't, not surprising you to see these guys take a, take a minute here to kind of settle in, yeah, you they, know, things like that, fouls they, like that. They are actually playing really well. Right. I think uh, Lucas, we haven't seen him much uh, here, but I know him from Argentina and he's, he's a great player. Oh, I mean, and a heck of a horseman. Oh, heck yeah. of a horseman. Yeah, yeah. He filled in, let's see, I think that he filled in for Alejandro Novillo Estrada in the Founders Cup when he took that ball to the face. But that's the only, I guess, that we have seen him in uh, a couple chuckers of uh, World Polo League competition. Look at that. They pick one up on the north side there, the high flag. We watch the replay. Adolfo sends that ball inside. Zubia, black jerseys all around him, reaching back. Del Cario. Able to pound that one right on through. Another great team play by Colorado. Great team play by Colorado. They need to, well, they are now by only by two goals. They need to tie the game and try to put some goals, you know, yeah. quick. Keep doing what they're doing. With yeah. Five goals here yeah. in uh, about nine minutes. Uh, they are... Uh, they're, they're making up for that six-goal deficit that they started with pretty quickly here. Zubia on the boards. He's going to stay at home here and let Del Cadillo go out on attack there. Back shot attempt by Lalor Worked forward. Here comes. Look at that. Everyone looking up, waiting for that pop fly to drop back to the ground there. Nice back shot by Nacho Figueres there. 
Nacho on Jatai Beyonce. Adolfo and Zubia. Adolfo on Leonor. Sending that one along the ground towards the goal. It gets on through. Unbelievable play there. He just let that one rip. I mean, Diego, how far out was he there? 90 yards, 80 oh, yards? Yeah, there? I mean, that, that was watch fun. that. He makes some space. That was fun. We, Under ponies. Yeah, we are used to watching Adolfo scoring those type of goals. Man. He can shoot from distance, and, and he's very accurate. As proven there, that one got under a pair of ponies. Got under eight legs in the first group of pass and then was able to get around that defender there. Uh, the teams end up back at midfield. They switch directions, as they do after every goal scored. Compensates for any wind center field conditions. And winning the throw in here is Blackwatch. Look at this. Juan Cruz Merlos on the move here on a mare name. Virginia is how it's spelled. I imagine it's Virginia, but here's Lalor. 4.09 left here. Lalor trying to pick the pieces up on this black watch play. He crushes that one right on through. Nice work there. We have the angle from behind there from where we're parked in midfield there. And that one was all Lalor all the way. Lucas, nice work there by Juan Cruz behind him to keep Zubia out of the picture. Perfect. Great goal by, by Lucas. Right on down the middle, that one goes. And it's 8-6 to six here. Two goals separate these two teams. Again, the Black Watch lineup here today. If you're joining the action late, Juan Cruz Merlos at 1. Nacho Figueres at 2. Lucas Lalor at 3. And Juan Bellini Sr. in the number 4 position. The Colorado lineup a little bit different also. Uh, this one will remain the way this way for the rest of the season. Oh, baby, look at that. Juan Bellini puts the moves on that Colorado player there. He ends up with the ball down in the corner. Del Carillo trying to get that ball away from him. Bellini trying to battle along the back line there. Can he get it done? They say it's through. He gets the flag. I mean, that was a man on a mission there. Let's see. It looks like time is out, though. 2.59. We watched the replay. Look at this. Bellini moves inside, beats his man. Del Carillo trying to get back to it. Adolfo Cambiasso there. Oh, yeah. That's across the line all day long. Nice work by Juan Bellini there for Black Watch. Picking the pocket there, that Colorado player. Uh, and showing us that he has settled into this 26-goal mm -hmm. action uh, by the uh, midway point in checker number two here. Are they? Uh, is there a little dispute out there? You think, or I don't know. I don't know if they were uh, if there was question by any of them about whether it went in. Just kind of watch as we watch a little bit of body language coming back to midfield. I guess not. I think maybe all good. So nine to six here, two fifty-eight left to play. So they're still. Uh, I think that they are trying to dis determine whether or not that was a goal. We just saw one of the officials come running by our booth here. We're in the uh, we're in the new and improved. World Polo League uh, mothership here. Look, we'll watch on the replay. Bellini tapping along the back line. And it heading towards the line. It looks over. Oh, yeah. Because it comes behind the post. Del Carillo hits it behind the post. Is that what you see? See. Sí. See. Sí. I mean. It's, yeah. That I think they are checking whether the ball was in or out. It, it, it looked in. Looked good to me. Sure. Looked good to me. Sure. I know that it. I know that you. You don't. You, but you, you know, might be a little biased. I mean, for, <laughs> for us, it's easy to watch it on on the replay. But when you are, you know, there in speed and everything is. Oh, it's v incredibly it's, tough, especially yeah. with the umpire. I mean, it. You know, yeah. there's there's no part of that that's easy. As we as we say yeah. a lot uh, in the booth here, uh, yeah. it is very easy for us to take a look yeah. at the videos to make a critique on the on the call, on the play, on whatever it is. And uh, I think I think it's great they can double check on on the TV and make sure and make what what is fair. You know. Well, and those are the times that replay 
is really worth stopping the action for, you know, exactly. um, to make sure that he was the goal was either in or out, you know. In that case, it was I think pretty pretty clearly in. But you know, it's it's good for the umpires to know that. It's good for the players to know one way or the other, so they don't feel you know maybe cheated one way or that they didn't get the the right call. Um, a, a lot of a lot of benefits to it. Their time is out again here. Two fourteen left, and Chucker at number two. We watch the replay here couple guys going in a couple different directions there and we'll see how they assess this one so nine to six here 214 left to play chucker number two started as a little bit of a rainy morning here in wellington is cleared out we had some moisture on the field De diego tell us about what that does as a player when you're sitting in the tent you've got your boots on your knee guards on any other everything ready to go your horses may already be at the yeah. tent and it starts raining what does that do to a player uh you just want to play you know when you're with your boots on you just want to play and you're just praying for uh, no rain you know yeah the horses are ready you are ready in your head your focus you know and and uh, it starts raining, it's like... Just interrupts the flow a little yeah, bit, the energy. Yeah. And from a field standpoint, does that uh, you know, do you adjust your first chucker strategy or do you change horses or anything like that based on some moisture on the field? I mean, it's obviously not too wet to play. They're still going to play, but the field did, you know, yeah. suck up some moisture. Yeah, yeah. Thank God it was not much rain. It was just a little rain, you know. Um, the field can take it and... Uh, I think umpires, they are checking yeah. wh whether it was a foul or not. Yep, another, uh, I think it, I think the one of these teams has is, is challenged the call there. Uh, what did you see on that one? Did you see anything that gave you any idea on what they're going to call here? Yeah, I think uh, the third man just came to to watch the play and, and they, they made a decision. So this one going in favor, seemingly, of Colorado here. Yeah. Uh, it'll be Doug Cadillo to do the honors. Yeah, Great penalty shooter. Juan Juan didn't have enough room to make that play. It was Juancito's line, so it was a foul. Doug Cadillo, right on through it goes. They say he does a lot. He spends a lot of time practicing his penalty shots. Yeah, yeah. He's a great uh, penalty shooter. He can crush the ball, mm -hmm. and uh, he's been really accurate. I love I loved hearing uh, him talk about how when he approaches the line, his aim what he's aiming at is you know a hundred yards in the yeah. air, a target up there, and that's where he tries to launch it uh, every time. Yeah, because he can hit the ball one hundred yards. So <laughs> exactly, because he, he can. Aims far. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's great. Out of the throw-in, his pal Zubia hitting a ball out in front. Adolfo Cambiaso all in front by six horse, horse lengths. Or more, Adolfo Cambiasso, no pressure on him there. A stick and ball session to goal brings his team within one there. So we saw a penalty shot by Del Carillo on the other side. That made it 9-8, 9-7. Uh, that one makes it 9-8, 1-15 left to play here as we watch the replay of Adolfo and Romana. I believe, is that Romana? He was on there with the ch chestnut with the I white think, face. Uh, I, I think it's Sugar. Sugar. Yeah. I think it's you, but I cannot see from... You might from have switched off from Mana. So under a minute left to play here, and Chucker, number one, winning the throw in here. Was Blackwatch stealing it away. Zubia tapping it out of the air. Juan Martin Zubia. Pressured here by Nacho Figueres. Backed up by Del Carillo. Del Carillo trying to send it for Zubia. Here's Adolfo. Adolfo Cambiasso trying to work around the outside of the pack here. 33 seconds remain. There's enough time for another Colorado goal here. Will they be able to tie it up? And Chucker number two, Adolfo trying to send it out in front. Dronavis and Zubia on their way. Del Carillo coming through, playing clean up here. 20 seconds left. And Chucker number two, Hieronimo Del Carillo working through the pack. Bolini trying to knock it away, but Zubia there looking for pay dirt and finding it. Nice work there. A high flag at the end of the Second by a hard-charging Colorado ties things up. Holy smokes, Diego, nine goals and two chuckers. Yeah, great last two minutes for Colorado, scoring those goals and tying up the game. Big time. One, two, three goals there in the end of chucker number two. 
uh, making a total of 12 goals scored here in two chuckers uh, and 18 that's, on the board on handicap. So yeah. we are uh, well on our way into triple crown of polo action here uh, in World Polo League coverage. You're tuned into Checker TV and the Polo Channel's live coverage of match number one of the triple crown of polo. Uh, we'll be right back after this commercial from Valiente Field number three. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the action here. You're looking live at field number three here at the always lovely Valiente in Wellington here. Colorado and Blackwatch teeing off here in our first match of the Triple Crown of Polo, our third and final tournament in World Polo League action here in 2019. Of course, we had the uh, one more tournament that was a warm-up, but th our third and final official tournament. Um, I'm joined by Diego Cavanaugh. And we're watching a great match between Colorado and Black Watch here. Uh, after watching two chuckers here, Diego, what do you think uh, we're, we're looking at for the rest of the match? I mean, these guys kind of getting settled in here. Colorado, there's no doubt. I mean, they just scored 9-3 to three on these guys. Uh, will they keep dominating here, or what's the... Where do you think they're going? Yeah, I think uh, when, when you start 6-0, you, you want to... You wanna you know, score quick mm -hmm. so that you, you tie them as soon as possible. And, and from now on, you know, it should be Colorado's game. So will they try and kind of settle in now or will they just keep attacking? Because no, their attack has been yeah. just superb. No, I think they should uh, keep attacking and keep trying scoring goals. And they are doing great. Big ball there by Adolfo Cambiasso. Del Cadillo able to put it through. Nice work there. Cambiasso firing off a pony named Maria. Del Cadillo off Dolfina Charata. One of Diego Cavanaugh's ponies, I believe. Is that one of yours, Diego? That's, uh, yeah, that's Charata. That's one of mine. Nothing better than that than watching your own ponies in action, yeah, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's it's fun. Great. How old is that horse? She's a nine-year-old. Uh, she's from La Dolfina Breeding, uh -huh. and, uh, and yeah, uh, Hero is going to play her in this tournament. Man, that's exciting. That's fun. Yeah, yeah, it's good fun. Have you been playing her earlier in the year? Or have yeah, you been yeah. Okay. I was playing her uh, the last tournament, and for this tournament, I I lent it to, to Hero. That's fun to, to, to kind of know how those horses move around. How does that work? Is that a horse that you ride, and you say, man, this would really be good for you, or he says, hey, I want that horse, or... <laughs> How, no, does, how does it work? No, no, because uh, because uh, Hero is a great rider, and, and I lend I lend that mare for the semifinal against Audi, mm -hmm. and he liked the mare, and and I said you can you Why can no? take her for next tournament. So now, do you say when you play against me, you can't do these certain <laughs> things, or how does that work? I, mean, I guess that kind of helps both of you yeah, because when yeah. you're if you're playing against him, you know the strengths of that horse, and I put it in the contract, you know. In the contract, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Smart man, <laughs> Diego Cavanaugh is a very smart man. That's the way to do it. Always in the contract. Uh, so Black Watch goes to the line here, 55 seconds into Chucker number three. Colorado has taken the lead here on the assist from Adolfo and the uh, finish there by Del Carillo. And now we'll see Juan Cruz, Merlos here. Juan Cruz shooting from a pony named Pite Helosa. 
And that one ends up a little bit wide of the goal, over that back line, yeah, out of play. He hit it well. Eh? He hit it well. It was just a bit to the right. And uh, it's important for, for Blackwatch to, to score and, and try to stay in game, you know? In the, uh, you know, Tommy Biddle, uh, normally who's in, in the black jerseys and black watch colors out there, said it perfectly to match. He jam Pamela one day when he was sitting with me that it, you know, a lot like basketball and polo, uh, you have to make your penalty shots. In basketball, you have to make your free throws. In polo, you have to make your penalty shots. Um, and... Uh, so we saw them, we see them leave one uh, wide there. In the meantime, Pony and uh, player touch turf there. That Pony takes a uh, lap around the field, heading back to their friends at the Pony line there. Del Carillo, uh immediately up to his feet. Uh, we see there's immediate medical attention out there on the field for Del Carillo and I think that pony has been picked up back there at the trailer so all is well at the pony lines and with that pony uh, so maybe a little moisture I didn't see I didn't watch that unfold was that a slip or was there contact made there do you guys happen to see that I didn't I didn't see what happened I just saw the mayor go to the floor and and hit on went to the floor both are safe so that's good that's what we like to see you hate yeah. to see him go down yeah. always hate to see him go down but you'd love to see both of them pop right back up both horse and rider um and uh we know that pony's a-ok -okay by the uh the lap that she took uh back to the trailer so we will give these guys a second to regroup here and uh come back for the remaining let's see we got 554 Left to play here in the first half of action. Yeah, and Where did Del Cadillo go? There he is. Okay, so he's back on a horse. Yeah, he got a pony. He's back on a horse. Back on a horse. Now, will that horse come back, do you think? What's the, you know, when, when a horse, you know, for our viewers at home that are probably wondering some of that stuff, you know, when you see that happen, will that pony, obviously they'll get checked out, you know, when, anytime any of these horses come off the field, whether they've, you know, had a slip or not, they get checked out by vets and all that stuff right away. So we know all that. Um, yeah, I mean, the mare will be checked up, and it look she's fine, and, and she didn't play much. Yeah, so only we're, we've got 550-something left here. Exactly. Uh, so probably she will come back. She will come back and play a couple more minutes. Perfect. All right, so the action picks up where we had left off there. Bellini downfield, La Lure trying to take advantage of the ball there. Doug Cadillo and Adolfo Cambiasso handle it in the backfield. It was off the mallet of Cambiasso, and that sends Juan Zubia downfield to try and beat Juan Cruz Merlos. A pair of Juans on the play there to Merlos with control at the moment. Juan Cruz. Juan Cruz Merlos trying to connect there with Nacho Figueres. Nacho and Adolfo. Nacho goes one way. Adolfo goes the other. He's able to maintain control. Adolfo Cambiasso looks downfield and fires. Adolfo trying to connect with Zubia again. Uh, Jernavis moving way out in front there. Del Cadillo in between Jernavis and Zubia. Zubia putting a plan of attack here together, trying to beat Lalure. Lalure bests him on the inside there and takes control for Blackwatch. Wanzu looking for an opportunity to lay a hook on him as Lalure moves to the near side. They're both running cross field. Zubia puts a bump on him, and that's going to put him in perfect placement here to take the next play. At the boards, it's Zubia taking that ball away from the Blackwatch team there with Adolfo trailing. Zubia comes off the boards, and he is ready to move down the middle of this field and find the 11 goal here of the match for Colorado. He shoots and it ends up wide of the goal over and out. Yeah, great play from Juancito and shooting from distance. Uh, unlucky it wasn't a goal but uh, on top of Peanut, which is a great mare. We've seen this mare play with Terre, Terre last yeah. time. Yeah, uh -huh. she, 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 she's amazing. Amazing. She, yeah, she's one of, the, of, of of the one of, of the group that is flying back to Argentina to play the Open. Uh-huh. Okay. So, so that decision's already been made, that she's going for sure. She's going. That's cool. That's exciting sure. to yeah. uh, to see that path. Yeah. Um, and that'll be her first time in Argentina, or has she been? She, no, well, she was from bred, Argentina. She's, she's Argentine. She's from La Dolfina. Uh -huh. She's out of uh, Boeing, uh -huh. you know, the, the stallion of Adolfo. Mm -hmm. And Hazel, which is a great broodmare from Adolfo. Oh, so there's the nut. 
yeah. the nut uh, introduction there, hazelnut. Yeah, yeah, uh. exactly. And yeah, I was like, I actually played her in, in Palermo a couple of years ago. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, and now she's coming back. So happy to see her, see her back in playing in Palermo. Yeah, she, uh, I mean, Tere, he, that was always a horse uh, that when he, when you saw Nut on the horse list, ooh, look at that, Adolfo leaves that one behind and wide. It's knocked out of there by an inbound Juan Cruz. It ends up out towards the corner, and it's picked up here by an on the move. Nacho, Figueres, Figueres, and Jernavis in a horse race here. They come together. Nacho kicks that one up and picked up here by Adolfo. Anyway, Tere always getting a lot done on Nut, uh, so it's fun to see that horse move around. See somebody else on her. Hear a little bit of a story about her. She's going to be packing her bags in a couple weeks here and heading yeah. down to Argentina. Here's Rob Jernavis jumping in for Colorado. Jernavis behind Zubia. He sends the pass. Zubia sends it to goal. Nice work there. The assist to Rob Jernavis. The goal to Juan Zubia. Uh, he's been looking. He's been looking for that goal since he and Juan Cruz were kind of going at it on the previous set of plays there. Uh, nice touch by his teammate there and friend Rob. Yeah, great teamwork. Uh, Rob passing the ball to Juancito, and Juancito shooting to goal. Great goal. Great stuff. Yeah. All the way around. Teams come back to midfield following that goal. The score now 11 to 9. Two minutes left here in the first half. Again, this is match number one of the Triple Crown of Polo. 26 goal action here at its finest. The third and final tournament in 26 gold play in 2019 here in South Florida. Zubia trying to work right on down the middle. Zubia, how about that? I mean, he makes it look easy the way he gets that stuff done. Of course it's not. I mean, that's, you yeah. know, especially with those. I mean, there, there's no shortage of talented players on either side here today. Uh, and watch, we'll watch the, uh, the beginning of this run here. Zubia keeping it close. The defender gets in position. And he just keeps trucking right on past him. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the defender was there. I mean, he he, he yeah. got to the right spot. A lot of horsepower, and, and and he hit the ball in the right place. Great timing. Great timing, and and he's been winning a lot of throw-ins, so he's doing a great job from from the throw-ins. That's uh, you know the when you look at the throw-in. Look at this. Talk about winning the throw and trying to make the most of it here. Will he be able to get it done? Juan Cruz needs this one for sure, and he gets it. Nice work there by young Mr. Merlos to put his team into double digits here and keep them within two. That was a big goal. Yeah, I think that, that was, was an important yeah, goal. Yeah, it's an important goal. You know, you want to go to the halftime by just one goal or, or tied, and, and he, he won the throw in, and he did an amazing approach shot, and it was an important goal for, for Blackwatch. In the meantime, the 30-second warning horn goes, so that will do it for the action here in the first half. Through three, look at that, 22 goals on the scoreboard down there. We started with six on it, uh, so 16 goals. Uh, if my math is right, it's probably not, but a lot either way scored in just three chuckers here. So the teams will head to the tents. Blackwatch goes into halftime down by two. Not a bad spot to be in when you're playing against a, a team as, as talented as Colorado yeah. and a team that has Adolfo Cambiasso on it. Exactly, exactly. And Colorado scoring 12 goals in three chuckers is, is a <laughs> strong. Big, yeah, big average, you know. Strong. It's, it's really strong. Really strong. So great great play out of both sides here. We're going to head into halftime, uh, have take a little break here between chuckers three and four, and we will be back shortly with the start of chucker number four. Folks, don't go anywhere. Stay tuned into the coverage right here on worldpolo.org. The action will continue in a couple minutes. we got some great uh, – uh, footage for you in between Checkers 3 and 4 here. This is Checker TV and the Polo Channel's live coverage of the Triple Crown of Polo. We'll be back after halftime. La yegua fue más famosa que por, por historia eh, que me ha divertido como viene el cuento es la falta en vido que le ha ganado contra un amigo jugando al truco. Eh, falta en vido significa es como el final del partido. ¿no? Entonces eh, le canté falta en vido, él me quiso y le gané con 25. Y la yegua terminó siendo una de las mis yeguas favoritas en toda mi carrera. De hecho, la cloné, la tengo clonada. 
Pero lo más increíble que del cuento es que la yegua jugó, ganó Copa de la Reina, a mejor yegua, jugó el abierto varios años. Y tengo hijas que, bueno, las llamo a, tra a, a, a través de, de los nombres del de juego, que son la flor, la sota, eh, todo a través de, de lo que es el truco y la... Este, el juego se llama Los Hijos, así que, y, y la verdad que tengo muchas hijas jugando acá, en, una está jugando Rob y otra estoy jugando yo. So I've been playing floor now and it's incredible. The uh, acceleration that this horse has out of the plays is pretty phenomenal. You know, you see a play and think to go to it and she accelerates into it with so much power, but at the same time she... She has so much handle and flexibility that to slow down afterwards is it's so easy. And, you know, I never rode uh, Falta en Vito, but I can imagine that she's, she has a lot of the same attributes that her mother did. I played Sota the first time uh, in 2012, and she was seven years old. There was a year that she came from Argentina. And after that, I played her again in 2015 and 2016. And probably in 16 was one of my best mares. Adolfo's gonna play her this year in the World Polo League season. Has a lot of power, you know, good mouth, uh, is good acceleration, and very good endurance. You know, it, they will play two chakras quite quite well, and that that I think is why they are so so good. tried to create a polo mecca here, some place where we can bring polo sponsors, pros here to our home to enjoy polo. I'm Jenny Latrell Benardani. We're here at my farm at Success Ranch in Declo, Idaho. So we start with the fields in 2014. There is three fields, two full-size fields with boards, and the third one we had, you know, sticking ball and playing practices. They are just four-year-old fields, but they they play like 20-year-old fields. When my grandfather purchased the property, there was an existing barn that was completed in 1914. We decided that the best thing to do with it would be to restore it and create a living space for all of our guests. Three levels, two combined kitchen areas. There are 25 rooms with private bathrooms. There's lots of space for everyone. The Success Ranch is a fully working agricultural farm. We have seven barns that offer stabling for 140 horses. We have a large exercise track. We like using the deep sound in the round pen for fine tuning our horses. We have a freestanding building that we call the Quincho. It has a huge grill, uh, barbecue area, and we cook just about every night. What makes this place so unique is that we can play polo in the morning, and there's so much stuff to do in the afternoon. Kayaking, paddle boarding, ATV riding. We also have a shooting range, trap and skeet shooting, and a pistol range. 
One new and exciting thing we're offering is helicopter tours. The helicopter tours gives you such a different perspective of how much land is actually here on the ranch. The main idea is to have a fun, flexible polo experience. Between our guests and in-house pros, you never know what level of polo we're going to get. So because we come back into the coverage here, we're taking a look at highlights from the first half of action here. Beautiful black mare that Adolfo was playing in the first there. Look at that. The stop by Nacho. I guess that's what it kept that one in there. Beautiful goal by Rob and Jordy there as they were running out of time. Another great one here on the highlight reel for Del Carril and Zubia. Those guys always find a good way to work with each other. Beautiful. Look at this. How many legs it gets under. A slow roller right See on that, in. It doesn't matter how that, far across the line it gets, right? That goal hurts, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's like slow motion. Yeah. This is a great play oh. from Juan, no? I mean, that was, he had control of that from not quite midfield, but man, he took that ball at about 90 yards out and went down the sideboards and then in, ended up challenging that one. Uh, but uh, Blackwatch held on to it. Oh, man, that was just wide open Adolfo there. So great action. Hard to run highlights on uh, all the goals we've seen here. I mean, we've seen 16 goals scored. Uh, one or two from the penalty line, maybe. But, man, I mean, a lot of goals from the field uh, in the first three checkers of action here. The score, 12 to 10, 22 goals on the board. Uh, six of them came on handicap for Black Watch. This is a little bit of an, an adjusted Black Watch squad here uh, today without uh, Biddle and Merlos. We see Lalor and Bolini Sr., uh, Lucas Lalor filling in for Pite Merlos. Lucas, a uh, five-goal handicap, Pite eight. So that gave Black Watch uh, that uh, enhanced handicap difference uh, when they started this one here. But, look, both of these teams going hard out here today trying to get this match won. You know, Colorado really looking for a win. Black Watch looking for a win also. Uh, you know, if... If two, if if you if you pick up two wins, you know with two wins you get to the semifinals. So both teams viewing this as a must-win game. Again, if you win two games in Triple Crown of Polo and the Triple Crown of Polo tournament, you get into the semifinals. So I mean, this this you know, both of these teams want to come away from this one and zero. Oh, that's going to help their chances in the rest of the tournament. You can't go 0-1 oh and, and have that chance of, of getting a berth in there. So both of these teams really, uh, you know, almost maybe even treating this as a final. I don't know. What do you think, Diego? I mean, I'm, you're the polo player. Tell me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it's always important to start winning, you know. It gives you confidence for the rest of the games, and, and also it puts you in, in a good position because you know that winning another game, you are – almost secure for semis so it's, it's important to start with a win does that with a with the uh, a, f a tournament format like that uh, does that put added pressure or is it look we want to win the first game regardless we don't care what happens afterwards no nah, any tournament you can start winning is always better than losing no? right <laughs> but um, but yeah every ev every game is is tight and it's you know, every every team has uh, chances of winning, so and it's very even. So 
you know, to start winning the first game is... is That's what you want regardless of the format yeah, for the rest of it. Yeah, 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 exactly. So a foul there whistled against Colorado. Yeah, Blackwatch going to pick this one up here. It's Juan Sr. Juan Bellini Sr. filling in here for Tommy Biddle, playing the number four position. Bellini. Out to the right, Adolfo Cambiasso has his eyes on this one. Cambiasso moves in on Caraqueña. And time is out. So exactly 30 seconds in to Chucker, number four. We watch here on the replay. Yep, that uh, clear, clear foul on that one uh, as that number one player comes in. The ball was there. Uh, I don't know if that's one of those situations where you look down and you see the ball and you figure why not uh, <laughs> or or what, but yeah, yeah. I I think uh, he didn't have a play. Uh, I think Adolfo knew that too. Adolfo knew that, but he 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 took the chance. He took the chance. Uh, bad chance, according to the umpires, to take. Uh, not uh, what was that? I guess not thirty yards. Uh, that one gets moved up to the midfield line. Possession. Held on to here by Colorado Zubia, trying to break away from the pack here. 50 seconds into Chucker, number four. Will he get that one? He will. What a beautiful neck shot by Juan Zubia. We watch on the replay here. Zubia, that's two men to beat there. Gets past them. One to go. Takes it to the near side. Bellini. Ama nope. Amazing goal from, from Juancito. I mean, he takes any defender, yeah, any yeah. potential to defend. Yeah, yeah, he's really good, you know, when, when, he, when he attacks inside the 80 yards and, and he just scored an amazing goal. Uh, taking on three players there in the black jerseys. Look, we watched that one unfold right in front of us here. We're in the new uh, World Polo League mothership uh, parked on the uh, midfield line. Uh, Adolfo Cambiasso and Juan Bellini Sr., Watch there on the replay. Juan sneaking in the side door there, according to the umpires. And here's Del Carillo. Hero Del Carillo. He winds up looking for Zubia. Zubia waits on that ball. Has attackers on his left there. Now Nacho, if you get us. Nacho in to defend here with Cambiasso on him. Nacho. On Tecno Luna. Back shot. Zubia trying to be there. Juan Cruz wants a whistle. Doesn't find one yet. Ball still rolling. Hit through the goal. Adolfo Cambiasso picks up another one here. 535 left in chucker number four. Colorado goes up by four. They Their momentum just continues to snowplow. Uh... Yeah, great goal from Adolfo. He didn't have much, much anger. You know, he had to put the ball between the two horses and small window. Yes, yeah, to shoot window. through. Yeah, but just enough for him. Ball back in play. Del Carillo trying to get rid of it quickly. There bounces off the mallet or pony of Merlos. Del Carillo now on the near side, turned back by Lalor. Here comes Adolfo, charging hard to keep the play here and keep possession for Colorado. Juan Cruz Merlos. Oh, Juan Cruz gets him that time momentarily. He digs it out of a hole there. Nice play, Juan Cruz Merlos. But they can't capitalize on control there. That's one of those things. When you beat the king, you, you better be ready to, to storm the castle, you know, I guess. I don't know. When you, when you beat him, you better be ready to hold on to control. Uh, he gets it back. In that situation, Colorado's holding on to it. Juan Zubia ends up with the ball at the end of his mallet here. 60 yards out, Zubia. Zubia, can he do it again here on these guys? Zubia trying to hit around him. Rolling towards the back line. Three black jerseys there. Figueres leaves that one over the back line out of play. I think we're going to have a safety. Figueres trying to defend there inadvertently. Put that one over his own back line, I think. I don't know. I Maybe they'll call it off a horse. No, I think he he was swinging, but he missed, and likely the ball went out. So, Good luck there. Knock, knocking for them. Good luck. It looked like he was trying to make that. I guess there was no contact there. Like you said, it just kept on going. 
So on the knock in there, knocked down, turned around. Adolfo's looking like he's going to shoot this one. He pops it up over the head of a lot of the defenders there. Picked off, though, nicely by Juan Cruz Merlos. Juan Cruz challenged there by another Juan. That was Zubia. Merlos able to hold on to it there momentarily. Zubia gets the hook on him, I believe. Now is looking for the ball. Zubia hooked. The favor returned maybe from Merlos there. Back shot by Adolfo trying to catch Zubia coming the other way. Juan Zubia in traffic. Zubia. Zubia on the doorstep. Now through the door. Nice work there, Zubia. Zubia, beautiful, patient play. Yeah, great back shot from, from Adolfo. And nice and awareness. Yeah, yeah, and Zubia had to pass Juan that was in the back, you know, it was not easy, and he made it look easy. At it, it, it 20, I guess 20 years young, uh, the confidence and control and kind of patience he has in those scenarios are really impressive to watch. Um, it looks like, speaking of, you know, that kind of patience and control, uh, Juan Cruz Merlos is, is really settling in, I think, to this Black Watch team. But in the meantime, look at this. Del Caril, a one-way ticket to goal on that one. Uh, an, an unstoppable Colorado team at this point is how this one looks, Diego. 16 goals they've scored, and it's only Chucker 4. There's two and a half minutes left to play. Uh, yeah. Del Cadillo looks over his shoulder, sees the entire Black Watch team is out of reach. Amazing how many goals they scored in only four chakras, and and all of them mainly from from field. From goals. the field, yeah. I mean, we've seen barely yeah. any. I mean, this has yeah. been a, a very open match here. Yeah. Uh, this started one, let's see, about 55 minutes ago. Uh, we're winding down chucker four here. Uh, so not a lot of stoppages. You see Lalour pick the pace up there. Adolfo gives the the line a little bit of room there. Lalour moves into a traffic area in front of the Colorado goal. Juan Cruz Merlos. They're trying to shut him down. Here comes Juan Bellini Sr. Nacho now maybe with an opportunity. Juan Bellini looking, walking, firing, ricocheting off a hoof. And wide. Yeah. Tough luck for Blackwatch. Yeah, many horses, you know, in the middle. It's a tough situation because, I mean, the, the yeah, play is slowed down. I think, are yeah. the umpires telling you to use it there, or what are they? Yeah, they tell you to use it, but once you slow it down too, so much, you know, uh, you have many horses in front of you. And oh, look at this Nacho trying to stick it to Del Carillo. The whistle goes. Which way? Who's? Which one of those guys is going to get this whistle? I think, what yeah. do you think, Blackwatch? Yeah, I think, I think so. they're going to get it. Yeah, yeah. We watch this, a fumble there by Del Cadillo, not something you see often or yeah, unlucky, ever. Yeah, unlucky for, for Hero. He was trying to make a pass, and, and uh, then he needed to let Nacho have one more play. But why would you do that? He's going to score, right? I mean, that's kind of his thinking is that yeah, if yeah. I foul, it's a penalty from right there. If I don't, he's going to score anyway. Uh so maybe he gets away with it. Is that kind of the thought? I don't yeah, know. What do yeah. you think? I mean, maybe you get away with it, you know, and you just. There's a chance the umpire's sneezing or exactly. looking at him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who knows? Exactly. Uh, but anyway, so Blackwatch will take that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, there with keeps them. That one keeps them within five here. They started up by six on handicap. Colorado made quick work of that. Uh, Black Watch with a couple goals along the way there also in the uh, first chucker there. But, man, it's been all Colorado all the way ever since. This is the end of chucker number four here, and it's Adolfo Cambiasso undefended to goal. We have seen that happen several times, or he, that he either has the room to run or the room to in time to shoot. Neither of those are uh, conducive to winning polo games. That's the guy you don't want to have time to do either of those things. Yeah, and he's scoring again on, on Schuer. This mayor is really quick, you know, and the Colorado hit a back shot, and this mayor is really quick to turn and accelerate, and, and he was gone. And that's an appendix horse, yep. right? For those yep. of you out there keeping track, that's a thoroughbred quarter horse combination there playing in the 26 goal. Beautiful appendix there, Adolfo getting it done. They go up 17-11. Chucker 4 is out the door. We're going to commercial break. This is Chucker TV and the Polo Channel's live coverage of the first match of the Triple Crown of Polo. We'll be right back after this message.
I love this mare that we got from Vicky Armour. Her name's Girl Power. She's probably the most comfortable horse I have. My name's Carlos Gracida, and I played the mare a couple times in Grand Champions. Yeah, Girl Power was always nice. She was always smooth. She always had a good mind, and for the thoroughbreds, that's huge. I play her usually first and sixth. Best attribute, definitely her speed. I was able to get on her and, and, and hit a big neck shot to the goal to go up by three. She has such a comfortable stride that I had such confidence hitting the ball, I knew I was going to hit it well because I was on her. Nacho Figueres walking back out onto the field here, getting ready for Chucker 5 to come alive here at Valiente. We're on field number three, the always lovely Valiente Polo Farm in Wellington, Florida. See, there's an army of field crew guys that are making their way off. Uh, I think probably ten guys come out onto this field in between chuckers here to start putting this uh, the pieces of grass back together here, try and keep this playing surface as awesome as possible uh, for six wide open chuckers of polo. And, I mean, that's what we've seen here today, Diego, um, is some wide open polo. There's sure there's, you know, six goals that separate these two teams. But, man, uh, they've been running and gunning. Yeah, they've been hitting long, long shots, you know, great back shots and ping, picking up those those passes and and a lot of horsepower. So the Colorado thing is they are doing great. Juan Cruz trying to come away with a win on the throw in there. He gets it. Adolfo holds him up. Lalour firing this one out in front. Can Juan Cruz run onto it there? Nacho trying to get it through. It's on the doorstep. Backed out of there by Hero Del Carillo. Nice defensive play there for Colorado. Bellini and Dronavis go at it there. Bellini looks for the deep neck shot and finds back line on that one. Colorado will have the bring in here from the north side. Adolfo. On Primicia. Yeah, and we see Adolfo taking the the knocking. Which that which usually we see Hero. Why would they uh, why do they change that? No, probably they are they are trying this different you know, different styles or this different things. They so are the they are winning okay and, and they're they're gonna try different things thinking on, on on another game. So we'll see where uh, that puts Del Cadiel if he sticks kind of in the number three slot and we see Adolfo really stay at home or if uh, he gets... He, it's interesting to watch he and Zubia. Look at that. Zubia just cranking another one through. Uh, it seems like he just can't miss today. Yeah. You get that feeling? I mean, there's days where it just yeah. connects. Exactly. There are some days, you know, that you feel you're with confidence and... And I've never had one, but I've heard about <laughs> these days. <laughs> and you see the ball bigger, you know? Yeah. Man, what and a play there. Beautiful horse. Yeah. I don't know how many goals he scored, but it looks like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Pintita, they're the name of that beautiful black yeah, horse. Yeah. This is another mare that Terre used to play mm -hmm. in the last couple of tournaments. And, and yeah, she's, a, she's amazing. So we've, if we, we're starting to see a lot of Tere's horses come up, what are we going to see him on <laughs> in the in the rest of the tournament? I can't I can't wait to find out. Uh, he's always uh, always fun to watch and always on on some top ponies. Yeah, no, he still he will still have a lot of great ponies um, for this tournament. I think uh, Juancito got a couple from Terre, but Terre will still <laughs> have left a lot, you know. Yeah. He's, he's still got depth. Yeah, there are plenty of horses. Juan Bellini with his hands full in the backfield there. He had Del Cadiel on him at first, then Zubia. Here's Dolfo Cambiasso trying to shut down that Black Watch drive. Black Watch trying to really keep the pressure on here, though. An opportunity for Del Cadiel. He's looking at Dolfo out in front there. Dolfo's going to have to hit the brakes here and adjust a little bit to take the pass, trying to keep it on the bounce. They're reaching back and now dropping the head and dropping the hammer on that pony towards the goal. It goes Del Cadiel. 
And Adolfo, uh, back and forth. Hmm. You know, uh, we've he, seen prettier looked, plays, but man, it happened. No, it, lo it looked like he he missed. You know, he hit it with a cane and he he missed the ball. But he's he has such uh, long arms that <laughs> he hit it again. Great reach there. Uh, <clears throat> as we've said before, they don't draw a map how you get there as long as you get there, and that was nice. Uh, nice work there between Del Carillo and Adolfo Cambiasso. We saw Adolfo as, as Del Carillo was making a break for that ball. We saw Adolfo just beat feet right down the middle hoping for a pass, and uh, he got it. They were able to put that one away. Primicia there. Uh, just a quick note on that horse. Uh, best playing pony in the Gold Cup in the U.K. in 2013 and 14, and best playing pony in the Gold Cup in Spain in 2014. So if that gives you any uh, idea of what kind of horsepower is out here, um, you know, has won top honors in England and Spain in the same year in the top tournaments there. Uh, now playing here for Adolfo Cambiasso. Look at that. Adolfo lets one rip there and bounces. Do you see who that went off of? Back <laughs> shot there. Back towards the goal. Picked off here by Bolini. Dronavis trying to hold him up, but Merlos doing a fine job with 3.11 to go here in the fifth, holding on to control. Juan Cruz Merlos. Another young player out there. I think, do you know how old he is? I think he's 20 years of 20, 21, something like that. Yeah, yeah Juan, I think he's uh, really Cruz. young. Uh, yeah, Juan Cruz is really young. He's really very talented player. Uh, I think he has a great future. No doubt about it. I mean, his, his, his style of play has is, is really evolved even since in the past two months. Um, he, the, he seems more confident and controlled and, and you know, looking to uh, really make plays that help yeah. benefit the rest of the team. Yeah, for sure. He has a great coach in his house, you know. <laughs> he has uh, Pete, you know, he's a, he was a, and he's still a great player and and uh, he's a great coach. I was lucky to have Pete as a coach in Is that England right? and yeah, he's a, you know, he's really good. Well, and, you know, no shortage of talent in the, uh, you know, in the bloodlines there from a, uh, a breeding standpoint that uh, we talked about at one point, their grandfather, they say we were joking around, a, a fantastic sire. <laughs> you look yeah. at the, uh, the, yeah. uh, the uh, yeah, exactly. Between all those Merlos boys uh, achieving just, uh, you know, getting to great levels of play. Time is out here, 151, 19 to 11 here, back shot. By Rob, we see Zubia. Oh, man, how about that? Zubia and Nacho trading a little paint there on that one. Uh, we'll see if that's where that call came in, if they didn't like the way those two, the speed there maybe. Um, which of those guys came together, hard to know for sure. The thing we do know for sure is that 19 to 11 here, 30 goals on the scoreboard, 24 of them from the field. Well, most of, I guess, probably 20 from the field, four or so from the line, uh, the other six on handicap. But, man, I mean, 30 goals on the scoreboard, well, That's and it's only Chucker 5 uh, is, uh, is a great thing to see. You know, we've seen a lot of action up and down again, even though, Colorado's run away with this one. I mean, he, uh, there's a chucker left to play, but I think that, that, you know, it would take something incredible for Blackwatch to dig out of that hole. I mean, uh, you know, that said, it's still great action. I mean, there's both teams still scoring lots of big runs up and down the field, seeing some awesome horsepower, uh, and a great way to start our uh, third and final tournament in World Polo League play. Yeah, we are, we are watching a great game. It's really fast, open. We are watching a lot of field goals, so it's, it's good fun. Juan, Bo Juan Bellini Sr. here. Juan winds up. It's downfield towards the goal. It's going to need some help to get to the center. Back shot by Nacho Figueres. Forward shot here by Adolfo Cambiasso. Here comes Colorado. Zubia and Merlos come together there. Zubia with control at the sideboards there. Players in motion. Zubia, I mean, he just rips the plastic off of that ball almost. He hits it so hard downfield for Janavis on a 150-yard pass there. Backed up by Del Carillo. Uh, back shot out of there. Nice work. Juan Bellini holding on to a pair of attackers down there. Gets the timing just right. A seasoned veteran there. And Juan Bellini, oh, and the ball stolen away here. Zubia. 
Is that another horse out of Tere's uh, line up there that Zubia's on? <laughs> yes. You know the horse is that. So <laughs> that's a medallion. Big neck shot there by Zubia. That's a hard one to miss. Uh, medallion. I mean, just the, the movements that that horse yeah, makes. Is yeah, yeah. He's a famous, famous stallion here uh, for Valiente. He won a best playing pony, in, I think, in the Gold Cup. And and in, yeah. The open here with yeah, Pelon. Yeah, with Pelon. And fifth, 2012 or yeah, something like yeah, that? Yeah, something or? like that, yeah. Uh, I think that's another horse flying to Argentina. Yeah, yeah, that would make uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's interesting. There's a couple uh, uh, a couple horses that they were unsure of that on the pony list, they were saying that this is the, you know, this is kind of the feeder, and if things go well here, then it'll be considered. So it's interesting. I guess this is the time of year yeah. that they start making. Yeah those decisions well we've put away five chuckers of polo here today we've got one more to play out right now as it sits heading towards chucker six we have 30 goals on the scoreboard one more chucker to play out we will be back for the remaining seven and a half minutes of polo and match number one of the triple crown of polo right after this commercial break we'll be right back We're back here, ready for chucker number six. We take a live look at the black watch back line there. Nacho Figueres has mounted his sixth chucker pony here and is making his way out onto the playing surface. His team trails by a handful of goals here as we look to start chucker number six. We see the beautiful Valiente main barns in the background there. Uh, and packed sidelines here. World Polo League match number one of the Triple Crown of Polo. Uh, if you joined us late here, we've missed a lot of goal scoring out here. This has been a goal scoring exhibition here today, 19 to 11. Uh, Colorado takes every one of those from the field or from the line. Black Watch started with six on handicap. They've scored five more to get them to 11. Um, this thing appears to be going in the in the direction here that Colorado wants it to, Diego. Yeah, they, I think they are playing uh, really well, really quick, very solid, and uh, making a lot of field goals, you know. So we'll see where we start this one here. Again, uh, the Colorado lineup, a little bit of an adjustment made out there. Adolfo Cambiasso going to play with Colorado for the final tournament. Uh, Diego is telling me, tell me again the rest of your team. So it's Poroto. Poroto, Terre, and Agustin Nero. Agustin Nero <laughs> uh, and Diego Cavanaugh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's that's, a, be that's a great what, fun. Is there a name? I mean, do you call you all like the Wrecking what, Ball crew? What, or what <laughs> do you, what do you <laughs> No, we are the World, World Polo League. World Polo League. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's going to be good fun. I mean, play. that is a uh, that's an all-star team right there, no doubt about it. Juan Cruz releases that one for Nacho Nacho Figueres out in front, battling against Hero Del Carillo. Nacho gets the jump on him. Nacho Figueres an approach shot to goal. Del Carillo coming back to do his job. Nacho almost out of room. Will he get it through? It hits a big left turn there. But I think across the front of the goal mouth and wide, Del Carillo on Dolfina Lavanda, a 10-year-old, trying to chase down Nacho Figueres. 
Uh, it and was was a great play by by Nacho and uh, and that mayor she she made a great run and uh, and lucky the last the last touch was not easy, just put too much too much angle but great, great play by Nacho. He's he's been playing really well, uh, you know the, all season. Yeah, all season. The last tournament, in my opinion, he was he was one of the best of his team giving a lot of you know attitude and pushing and he's a, and it's great fun to play against him you know he uh as far as a, a somebody playing that number two position or playing kind of that's that i guess really their game is, is always kind of about attack mode i mean nacho plays that role so perfectly for that team uh yeah, yeah. he makes a lot of uh, a lot of uh, the dirty work for for the team you know pushing and and He's he's been playing really well, and a lot. Of, I feel like a lot of times he's tr he he pulls the team forward a little bit. I mean, he's the offensive yeah. kind of yeah. charge that that gets them hitting to him or gets him gets him kind of going. Yeah, uh, charging through there. Oh, look at that! That one popped up and hit him maybe on the side of the side of the helmet there. Uh, unfazed though, is Zubia. It's picked up here by Black Watch, Juan Cruz Merlos, Juan Cruz, pressured there by Rob Dranavis on his way by. Nice pressure there. Merlo's going to leave it for his teammate coming down the line there. That was Bellini. Bellini, perfect pass for Lalour. Lalour trying to hold on to it. I mean, nice stick work here by these guys. Blackwatch trying to get to goal, but finally overpowered and overtaken by Colorado. Del Carillo first. Now a cut shot here by Adolfo Cambiasso. Leaves him looking for horsepower and finding it to stay out in front of Bellini there. Adolfo Cambiasso working downfield. Bellini hoping he's going to leave it behind. He hits the pass for Zubia. Zubia's going to crank this one at the goal, no doubt about it. I knew it before I could say it. Couldn't get the words out fast enough. You could just Golash. tell. Yeah. What, what a great goal, eh? Amazing Man. play by, by Adolfo on, on Solita. Another another mayor from, from Boeing. And uh, he just he had a ice on, on his back, you know? Yep. He saw Juancito coming on the left and just hit one shot straight to goal. And uh, Zubia on uh, Secretaria, which I think is one of his own horses there. Is that right, Secretaria? Yep. And the ball's back in play. Lalor. Lucas Lalor. Now Nacho. Nacho Figueres. Nacho. Trying to get that one through Del Cadio, unable to do so. Del Cadio gets the rebound off himself, picks the pocket of Nacho. No whistle sounds there, or did it? It did. Colorado was on a breakaway there, going the other way, but time already out. 351 left in regulation. Colorado has wandered into the 20s here. 20 goals scored. To 11. A big outing here for Colorado. Black Watch was able to keep it close here for a, a couple of chuckers and lean on that six goal lead they started with, but eventually they caught up. I mean, they were scoring, I think they averaged four a chucker in the first and aren't, haven't slowed down here. 351 to go. This one goes in favor of Black Watch. And it'll be Juan Cruz, I believe. Or we'll yeah, Lalure coming back on on a fresh pony there. And Juan Cruz Merlos. He winds up. It's lofted nicely and right on target. Nice work there. Juan Cruz Merlos puts one away from 60 yards out. Great shot by Juan Cruz. Straight in the middle. That's exactly how you want to do those. Yeah. So the teams come back to midfield here. Three minutes and 25 seconds left to play. And the sixth and final chucker of match number one, the Triple Crown of Polo. Again, this a game that Colorado uh, wants to win here. If you go up 2-0 and oh in World Polo League, or excuse me, in uh, Triple Crown of Polo play, you end up into the semis. So 
Uh, both teams wanting to do that. Colorado is able to win match number one and keep that hope alive. Zubia having just a bang-up day here. Juan Zubia uh, has had a hard time missing the ball here today. He runs out of real estate on that one. Uh, and, of course, as I start talking about how well he's doing, that's the one that gets away from him there. But, man, is he, he's put yeah. so many away here today uh, and really just had a phenomenal outing. On the knock-in, Black Watch. With control here, Bellini hits out to the right. Juan Cruz moves in. Juan Cruz Merlos under the black helmet, black jersey there. Zubia in front of him. Bellini behind in pink. Coming down the sidelines. We'll see if it stays in play. It does at the boards. Nacho Figueres trying to move inside. A beautiful shot off the boards. He's got Adolfo in his dust. He cuts it to goal. Nacho Figueres, a beautiful shot. Adolfo trying to knock it out of there. Well done, Nacho Figueres. Beautiful play there with two minutes left here. Nice cut shot. Adolfo trying to chase that one down. On great, the... great goal from, from Nacho. He, he, you know, he had the Adolfo's pressure, and, and he, he hit a great uh, cut shot. Man, and that's not something you see often there, uh, is Adolfo letting that ball get past his mallet. A beautiful horse there, that uh, black American thoroughbred named Ana. Underneath, underneath Adolfo there. Man, great one, run to goal. That's what we were talking about. Nacho Figueroa is just, a, I mean, a, a hard-charging guy. Never giving up. Bears La Lore picking one up there, picking up a loose ball in the midfield area. Del Carillo trying to put the moves under there. The ball left behind and picked up again by Adolfo Cambiasso. Adolfo slowing it down. Adolfo Cambiasso trying to play around Bellini there. Rob Dranavis in the vicinity. La Lure comes away with momentary control. He's got Adolfo on him. Adolfo's looking over the hip of that pony, looking at the ball <laughs> right behind the saddle there, trying to find an opportunity to get in. A little bit of a melee play there. Back shot by Adolfo. Del Carillo there. It's sent inside. Rob Dranavis. Called off by Zubia. Wanzu going to play this one here for Colorado. In the final 35 seconds of action here in match number one, Del Carillo looking inside, trying to find Dranavis there. The 30-second warning horn goes 20 to 13 on the scoreboard here today. Colorado and this newly formed, or uh, yeah, newly formed team here. The, the combination of Cambiaso, Del Carillo, Zubia, and Jurnavis gets it done here today. One more point onto the board there. Final official score: 21 to 13. Diego. I don't know if we could ask for a better game than this as far as goals scored. Great start for, for Colorado, you know, to get some some confidence and first time playing together and a good start. A good, a good start for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that uh, could be the team to beat here so far. You know, it'll be yeah. interesting to see uh, what the rest of the weekend and the, and the games next week bring here. Uh, we see, we'll see a new team, a newly kind of formed team in, in action. We see a little bit of a shakeup on both sides here today. Uh, so, so far, so good. Match number one, all said and done. Final score, 21 to 13. Worldpolo.org is where you will find all of the scheduling updates and information about upcoming events. Folks, thank you so much for tuning in. If you're not following us on the social platforms yet, please do so. We would love to interact with you uh, during the game and uh, over the course of the season. So find us on Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, the Twitter, always on worldpolo.org. For the updates, uh, on behalf of the Checker TV Polo Channel, World Polo League Cruise, thank you so much for tuning in. Diego, thank you, as always, for stepping in the booth with me here. No, thank you, Gus. My name's Gus Whitelaw. Thank you for tuning in to World Polo League Action. That will do it from Valiente number three. Thanks for tuning in.